I'm Amy, sex educator, sex and relationship coach, and co-owner of PurePleasureShop.com. I'm April, VP of the cutting-edge sex toy company, Hot Octopus, and I dedicate my life to the business of sex. We are on a mission to teach you how to have hot sex, deep intimacy, and how to make your own rules for who you are as a sexual being. Welcome Welcome to to the Shameless Sex Revolution. Want to learn more? Go to shamelesssex.com. And for 50% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use code SHAMELESSSEX at purepleasureshop.com. You are listening to a pleasure podcast. For more from our sex podcast collective, visit pleasurepodcasts.com. Well, hello, everyone. Hey, everybody. Guess what year it is? 2028. What? Just kidding. I, I time warped. You did? Leap. I'm in someone else's body. 2028. What is it this like? This is not April in April's body. Are we still in the COVID times? I am a 95-year-old man that sips scotch. <laughs> You're so regal. Are we um, still wearing masks? Um, yeah, we yeah. are. Is there still an orgasm gap? But maybe we're at a gala, a masquerade. Oh, <laughs> this is sexual. There's no more orgasm gap, everyone. It's oh. over. Sweet. Uh, That's No, nice. it's 2021. This is our first episode of 2021. Yay. Um, yes, back to the Shameless Sex Podcast once again. There are still no parties. In 2021, no parties. We, we spent... Uh, New Year's with... Uh, Me, you, and your partner? Yeah. <laughs> the three of us. We had a social distancing party, but your neighbors... It was like three as AKA company. AKA your... It's on your land compound. Mates, my landmates. Land mates in the main house had a few people over, and they were all like flashing us from we, the other window. We're like, we We're like hyping it. We, they were like, we're having a couple people over. We're like, yeah, we're going to stay on our side, because that sounds like a super spreader But I brought, I, I brought pizza for everyone, and... Yeah, we met them outside. And in, they took slices. And hand them slices, yeah. and we hung out for five minutes in the great outdoors, and that was about it. And then we would, oh, flash each other through the windows. They're all people that we've seen throughout. See, but that, I, I don't agree with that conversation. Oh, really? The, oh, it's, just, it's, all, it's cool. It's just people I see, because all it takes is that person that you see goes to some place and if you well uh, i yeah. licked the pizza though did, did i tell you that <laughs> i licked every slice just to make sure at any rate we're not going to get political <laughs> because y'all hate when we do that so we're not going to be doing that right now uh everyone has different opinions on this but i feel like we were very cautious and i really was happy that we had our new year's i'm sorry i'll just be selfish it was about me, and I got to be with two people that I love, my partner in April. <laughs> so. It's true. I had a whole cracking open, and you guys took care of me like mom and dad. Yeah, I'm your mom, and my partner's your dad now. Yeah, I was like, you're like my dad. And he's like, I'm so proud of you. And I was like, thank you. I love oh you. Oh, my God. It was so cute. It was really fun. So yeah. if anyone out there has any daddy issues like me, call, <laughs> call my no, partner. Go, yeah, you could call her partner, but you could also just... Find someone that tells you they're proud of you, and it's like Aww. everything's healed. You're and like, they wow. hold you when you're sad. Yeah. I think that you could, that, that's like a, I mean, I don't think people should have to pay for this, but there, this is a this is a niche, right? People who have mommy or daddy Amy's issues. Amy's new business model. They just want to be held by mommy or daddy and told that they're wonderful and lovable and that they're amazing. They can grow up and be anything that they want to be, and they're accepted just as they are. That's what I tell Legend every day. I'm like, you will do great Legend things. Legend does not need to hear that. He already knows. <laughs> <laughs> He's fine. He's absolutely fine. Maybe Perry should hear that. We're talking about our dogs. But I tell him that too. Anyways. All right. So this episode we recorded a while ago with Davey Wavy. Yeah, that's right. Awesome name. It's called Lessons from Porn. Davey Wavy does. He's uh, fun. He's, he's a so director of fun. porn. He's yeah. in porn. He is uh, one of the creators. Very attractive. Of, very sexy. Actually, when he sent me the photos to use for this podcast episode, he was like, most of my uh, photos are me naked or half naked. So here's one with fully fully clothed. Here's one just like with my shirt open. I was like, our listeners will like the shirt open. Thank you. I know. I was like, well. He's very sweet. You're very attractive. You're smart. And he gave me some good advice on some anal. It wasn't anal bleaching. Anal hair remover. Oh. That he said, I wrote it down before we were recording. He told me this. And I wrote it down. And I will share with anyone. If you want to get rid of the anus hair ever. We're not sponsored it's called, by them. We're not. No. But I haven't tried it yet. But he said it's the best for a cream for your butt hair if you want to get rid of it. And you don't want to wax. Which I was cream? telling him I don't want to wax. And shaving is a little dangerous. Yeah. I have almost nicked. Unless they have the anus. Manscaped. It's called Electric. Magic Shave, apparently. Ah. So. If anybody out there is looking for the new trick. I don't know why people just don't go electric shaver, though. 
Cause Back it, in the A news? Yeah, because it doesn't nick or snag any nuts. Or I can't anuses. get the right angle to get it all in there. Not you that I lay, have a problem with anus I hair. I, okay. I've never done anything with my anus hair, and it's fine. It's not like very hairy, but I'm just saying sometimes I'm like, mm, and I just take a little bit of the razor back there. And I'm like, wow, I've got a lot of anus With an hair. actual blade. Yeah. In the dark it's, areas that you cannot see. I mean, I just prop a leg up. You're so daring. You're well, so bold. Anyway, this is not what this episode is about, but I wanted to share <laughs> that because it's been in my notes since we recorded, which was on, I don't even remember. It was weeks ago. This episode is about porn, but if uh, what I'll say is if... Anyone, first of all, I love pubic hair. I'm a big fan of pubic hair. Yeah, I also do trim. I love, I love. She got a full bush. I, I have a full bush, but I do trim it and I do trim it with Manscaped because they have the little clipper attachment and it is awesome. And cause I still want some hair, but I want it to, I trim it like once a month basically. I like trimming it in the shower though. Yeah, and you, it's waterproof. Yeah, up too. But no, but that's because otherwise there's just mess all over. Yeah, if your hair, if you especially if you have a lot of hair, someone walks into your bathroom like, uh, excuse me, you're like, did you just shave your beard? I didn't know you. No, had that's one. for my ass hair. Yeah, <laughs> that was my anus beard. <laughs> Even better. Uh, but anyways, if you're going to get, trim anus hair, I would say go with electric trimmer just before you go. Maybe I'll try do. that, Amy. Yeah, it sounds safer. Can I borrow yours? You can buy Yeah. <laughs> I'll we, sanitize it after. We can, yeah, totally. It's metal. Metal sanitizable. Yeah, yeah so. you always share your things with me. Okay, so before we dive in the podcast, we have a sex question, but we also have more listener feedback on cuckolding and hot wifing. We keep it's getting... It's a hot topic. It is a hot topic. So I actually put a call to action out there to some other sex educators. I feel folks. like Susan Bratton would, for some reason, know about this. She probably does. Yeah. She knows some things. So but Susan, if you're listening... Susan, tell us. Well, no, I actually did put a call to action for someone to come on the podcast just to talk about hot wifing. And I had someone say that they can talk on it. So hopefully we have it happen. But they have this a PhD listener, in hot wifing. Yeah, they're Ooh. they're very experienced. A doctor, a doctorate in a hot wifing. A doctorate in hot wifing. So this listener said, "You said cuckolding is where guys like watching their girls. No. Also, people often lump together hot wifing and cuckolding, which y'all lump together as well. Hot wifing is where the guy, aka a stag, enjoys letting his partner get pleasured." People play on their own spectrum. Some like to see others hit on their lady, roam the same room to letting their partner live their own sexual adventures on their own. Stags aren't into humiliation play typically. They just like to see their women slut out. I really like the term slut out. Mm -hmm. Cuckolding is different in the sense that it includes humiliation for the guy or girl. Ooh, that's an interesting fact. For example, it could be more vanilla from the girl telling her cuck how much better another guy fucked her, how much bigger he is, etc. Some folks use chastity play here so the guy cannot get pleasure and also for the added benefit that the guy comes while watching and listening. He doesn't get post nut regrets. Ooh, in air quotes. Cuckolding could be more extreme. No, those are actual quotes. Oh, actual quotes. (laughs) (laughs) Well done. Okay, actual quotes. Cuckolding could be more extreme where the guy is feminized or sissified, where he has to lick the cum out of his partner or force a by play. Forced Ooh. by play. And then this, per- this listener also talked about how there's a lot of shame in cuckolding. So what's interesting is that this listener is saying it's a lot more broad. But I think that it, people, put, first of all, they say hot wifey and cuckolding are in the same category. No, they're, they're very different. Okay. And cuckolding is a lot more broad. A lot of people say it's often just you watch your partner getting fucked and you, the woman getting fucked. And they're actually saying it's way more broad than they that. They have. Well, it's way, and they, there's way more involved than just watching your partner get fucked. Exactly. It can be that. And it doesn't have to be that, too. It literally can be that she goes and, or she, or they, they go and have sex like, with someone else. And then you have to. Lick that come right yeah, now. And chast, chastity plays. So but what about the forced piece? Like, is it, is it forced? in quotations forced by play or is it forced but consenting consensual force when i think when you think of kink right and there's something that is forced in it it still is consensually forced because they know that that's involved in that so they are participating it's like we have an unless you say i don't want to do that yeah we have an agreement here and and i hope that people are having these conversations beforehand not just diving into it without talking about this but you know our in the sex positive world you'd say all consensual sex is good sex so i would imagine that these people are having these conversations but it is forced in the sense i and i am again i'm not an expert on this this is my guess and this is why we need to have more speakers on this it sounds like it is forced in that there are these um kind of like role play threats in 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 intertwined in this that make it really hot it's not cuck holding either by the way it's cuck old cuck holding c-u-c-k-o-l-d cuck holding cuck holding 
by like, the way. It's like saying that, cuckolding. Yeah, and it says, but in the dictionary, well, this is the online dictionary, it says it's a verb of a man make another man a cuckold, a cuckold by having a sexual relationship with his wife. But then it's of a man's wife makes her husband a cuck old by being sexually unfaithful. So interesting. I feel like this is an underdeveloped and not, not that we need to have everything fully classified. And I like that what, what this listener did is they said it's a, there's a lot more to it and it's not just this narrow category and it definitely is not the same as hot wifing. Um, so again, we will have more episodes on this because we obviously do not know this, but I like that this, this listener is enlightening us that, um, brought in the definition. Don't limit it. It's interesting because a cuckold is a husband of an adulterous wife. The wife of an adulterous husband is a cuck queen. In evolutionary biology, a cuckold is a male with unwittingly who unwittingly invests parental effort in juveniles who are not genetically his offspring. Oh, thank you, Wikipedia. That's a yeah, probably an older definition because yeah. what this listener is saying is let's broaden it and not just limit which it makes to that. sense because all of all of the terms like the sexual terms that have been developing while there's been a sexual awakening since let's say the last 20 years have really been redefined when it comes to swinging and polyamory and open. And so it makes sense that this is also changing. So Wikipedia, we should submit a, a reference update for them to say, Hey, cuckolding isn't just this. Just so it's you also know this, a wiki reference, a wiki reference. Cause this is from 1997, by the way. Yes. Their definition Wikipedia, but I just wanted to, because I always thought it was cuckolding, but it's cuckolding. Cuckolding. All right. So sex question time. I'm going to read the sex question today. Woo! All right. This is titled Being on Top. I really want to ride my boyfriend, but every time we try, it just fails. We've talked about it a lot, but often the talk just ends badly and very emotional. I get emotional because it feels really vulnerable to be failing at. And he gets emotional because he feels this pressure. And often he ends up going soft. In the beginning, I was just never on top. And I don't think he liked having me on top because he was not used to it with other girls. And it was hard for him to really let go. How can we make this a more pleasurable experience for the both of us? What can we do to make me and him more relaxed when I'm on top and feel more confident? Good question. Have you ever had this happen? When I was in a marriage, marriage. When I was marriaged, I at the beginning I loved being on top, and I had this like freedom in it. And then it slowly shifted where I felt really vulnerable because I wasn't. Com I, I started gaining weight. I started being on like feeling like I was not not getting the right amount of pressure, and I wasn't going to be able to come. So I would get in my head. So then I'd just like be like, let's switch. So I have been in both positions where it's been really confidently executed and feeling really good, and I've been where I. I'm uncomfortable. I'm like, he's looking at me. This is weird. I, I can't like the grinding is great, but I, I just knew that I wasn't going to be able to come. So then I'm like, I'm just doing this for him. And then it sort of turned into this head trip for yeah. me. And then if there's, there's a softness going on with, if the cock is going from hard to soft or semi hard to soft, that could be for the penis owner. It could be a little bit challenging to come back from, to be like, fuck, like I, the pressure of whatever it is. So I say for now, if I were, this person take a break and the, turn the pressure cooker down to a low and let it go to a simmer and do the things that you feel confident and good at and that feel good to you and feel good to this uh this dude or penis owner and dude. then maybe slowly dabble with changing positions and being on top and grind it out for a little bit but then switch again yeah. and if you're not there or if it feels like there's too much pressure don't fucking put pressure on yourself it's not it's not going to turn out with it with uh, uh I, I not not that orgasm is the goal but it's not going to turn out to be something you might be, get more in your head if you're feeling all this pressure yeah a hundred percent it sounds like a very heady process on both ends both people are, are feeling it and then it results in the bodies not responding in the way that you want them to and i think and they're ha trying to have conversations about it and it's getting really emotional so um, which I understand performance is a huge thing. It's such a trigger for people. We put so much worthiness and value in performance, which I think is so unfortunate. It really doesn't have to go that way. And, um, you know, a good, good or great sex is a practice. And the more we practice it, the better we are at it, the more confident we can be. And so I think 
uh, it sounds like you know, you y'all are both out of practice. Whether it's it's his experience is not having someone on top and his own headiness of not being able to stay hard as or as hard as he would like to, and then your own confident stuff about being on top and probably feeling like it's a little awkward, not really knowing what to do, and then worrying about him and a lot of the caretaking about him, and also stating that it it just fails. Yeah. Why why failure. is it failing? Yeah. Why why do you feel that it's a failure when when the cock gets soft? It's failure. I mean that's yeah. not fair to your own self and, and to that's the, society's, the yeah society's bullshit that says that great sex has to have hard cocks and you have orgasms to come. Yeah, right for now. everyone at the same time oh god which would be really boring if that was how it, it always be. was instead great sex is about intimacy and about connection and about exploration and play it's about riding that cock soft or hard and pleasure or maybe there's no cock involved maybe there's no cock. yeah whatever maybe you're just doing. grinding yeah dry humping bring back the dry hump and work with whatever's present right the cock gets soft and then so you're like all right the cock soft so don't you the way to work with that is to really not shame the person and i this i doesn't sound like they're shaming them but be like that's all good we can do other things you know i can run rub against you and grind against you without having to have a hard thing inside of me uh, i like the advice of kind of backing off a little bit and also just making it a fun, playful exploration. Don't put so much pressure on it needing to happen a certain way. If the bodies all of a sudden get a no or they're not, you're not getting enough blood flow, then just stop, press, pause, do something else. Some other tricks that you can do. Um, you can be on top with the cock inside of you and you can actually take two fingers like your thumb and your pointer finger and, and grip around the base of the cock mm-hmm. and actually as you're moving up and down around it you have a firmer pressure around it cause maybe because maybe the cock is needing a firmer pressure of some sort too um you can try to reenact the movements as if they're similar to the master styles that the penis owner is used to um, you can stop and press pause and then do other things to get the penis more activated and hard and then go back like, you know it doesn't mean you have to keep it's not a failure if you just stop and press pause you can take breaks you can you can totally change and do something else and then come back to it later Ooh, or if the penis owner could try the Adam plus cock ring which we designed for the ultimate and grinding oh, cock I are, helped yeah. yeah I helped design the Adam plus because it you put it on flaccid you it, it you put it on around the, the shaft and the balls. And then if you're grinding on this product, so you put it on when you're totally soft, when you get an erection, it'll help maintain the blood flow. The penis owner is going to get perineum stimulation, AKA taint, AKA gooch. If you're on the East coast, Ooh, yeah, Brooklyn, gooch. shout out. Uh, that really does help. And it's like really amazing on the vagina because the shaft will be vibrating. So you can feel like your vaginal canal will be vibrating because the shaft is like its own, vibrator and then the texture on the outside for the clitoris while you're grinding on it Ooh. it's completely stimulating you as well so you're getting all of these points of pressure and then your penis owning friend will be getting their points of pressure and, and can then, help keep the blood flow there yeah too. exactly so and something guess, to try out guess where you can get it chip pierrepleasureshop.com and what's the coupon code shameless sex sex <laughs> I could never get I thought you were going to say shameless sex. Sex. Shameless sex, you get 15% off. Sorry, Janice. I always forget all the coupon codes. Uh oh, that's I'm okay. I'm a bad daughter. We love you. We yeah, love so you. hopefully this helps and um, more, and just more practice. And I know the conversations are hard, but also making it a playful exploration and laugh it off too. If sex is awkward and you're like, well, then you know, my, my pussy went dry or the cock went soft or whatever. Don't shame yourself for those things. Be like, all right, what do we need? Do we need more lube? Do we need to try something else? Do we need we to take stop? a break for safety's yeah. sake? And like, oh, well, that was awkward. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. I Let's love turn you. on a hot Netflix and chill movie. Ooh. Let's turn on Fatal Attraction and get it to the scene that isn't scary. Nine and a half weeks. Oh, nine and a half. Oh. Vintage. That scene where she's in the dress and she's doing like, it's like the hat song. Oh, yeah. I don't remember the song right now, but. You can. What is it? So you, you can take. Where you can take, take your hat off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we need to watch it again. We're going to quit sex podcasting and just go full karaoke podcasting now. <laughs> oh, yeah. By the way. Oh, God. Shameless sex reviews on oh, yeah. iTunes. We put a call to action. I just looked and no one has done it yet. Um, if anyone wants to write a review for us and you can request uh, for April to sing a song 
for us. She'll only sing like two verses or, you know, two. I'm not going like, to make lines. it a whole singing thing. It's just going to be me doing a thing. I do a very great share. It's not guaranteed that she'll do it. She'll pick and choose which song she'll do. But. And if you haven't written us a review on iTunes, we do ask you to do that. Often it only helps more people find shameless sex, y'all. We don't get anything other than the sweet love of your words. So if you have a minute in your busy day between your Zoom calls or your children or driving or masturbating, go ahead. Bait. Go on iTunes and write us. A five star review. Are you ready for a bio from Davy Wavy? No, I want to go bait. Amy Marie. I'm baiting. Social security number five, five, five. <laughs> six, five, six, five. All right. Nine, nine, nine. Let's do it. That's too many letters. So, Davy Wavy, with more than 700 million video views, Davy Wavy's YouTube channel is the largest and most viewed LGBT channel on YouTube. Davy's latest adventure is the launch of the gay erotic website, Himeros.tv. By collaborating with renowned sex coaches, tantric instructors, and sexologists, Himeros.tv uses erotic video content to inspire better gay sex through connection, pleasure, and sexual exploration. Himeros.tv is like porn, but better. To learn more, visit Himeros.tv. That's H-I-M-E-R-O-S dot TV. But first... So many New Year's resolutions are about doing less of something, but why not give yourself more? More pleasure, more rest, more time to connect with yourself and your body. That's why we love Dipsy. Dipsy is an audio app with everything from erotic stories to bedtime stories to soundscapes to help you drift off to sleep to wellness guides and how-tos that you will love. Ring in the new year right and get into the habit with Dipsy. Whether you want a story to turn you on or wind you down for better sleep or you want to try some guided meditations or masturbation, Dipsy helps you get in touch with yourself so you will be feeling your best all year round. And for our listeners, Dipsy is offering a 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash shameless. That's a 30-day free trial when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash shameless again dipsystories.com slash shameless we promise you'll love it and it's interview time all right everyone it is episode time and we are here with davy wavy you've already heard a little bit about davy in the uh, bio the intro and we will start as we always do wait i think we should ask him how he got the name davy wavy oh we'll start with that i think we should how did you get the name davy wavy davy well, uh, I'm so glad you asked. It's actually a nickname that my parents gave me when I was a little kid. And when I started my first blog, there was this like little like bio tagline that you needed. So I said a little Davy Wavy goes a long way. And then it just stuck. <laughs> and it's Googleable. It's like easy Googleable. It's easy yeah. to spell. It's better than my real name. So it kind of just stuck. And I'm it, going with it's it. You, you're so adorable. And sorry to interrupt you, Amy, but That's I was fine. so curious and it popped up. I was like, it also reads really well, Davy Wavy, because it almost looks like a, not a palindrome, but almost, you know what a palindrome is, right? Where you can spell it backwards and yeah. forwards, but it lo- it reads like that. So it kind of sounds like a cartoon hand character. Hand. Davy yeah. Wavy. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Like your yeah. little cartoon character superhero yeah. or something. Mr. Balloon Hands. And then <laughs> surprise, I produce porn. <laughs> <laughs> and but you do porn. This is great. <laughs> Perfect. Well, that will be our next question. So we know why you are Davy Wavy. I love that it's from yeah. childhood too. Um, tell tell us a little bit more about how you got into the world today of se- sexuality, porn, etc. Well, I started making YouTube content back in two thousand and seven, which is like right when YouTube first. It was like before YouTube was YouTube. And I think my seventh or eighth video, I was living in Toronto and um, I was looking out my window and I had this really hot neighbor and. I caught him masturbating and made a video about it. And um, it was like the same time every day. It was like 4 p.m. He would like whip it out. And he'd have like one foot on one side, one foot on the other side. And in hindsight, I think he was probably like, maybe he was like a webcam boy or something. Mm -hmm. But I made a video about it and it went viral. uh, And people started subscribing to my channel. And at the time, I was kind of making videos about coming out and, and dating. But now I'm... 37 and you know it's been a a while and my interests now are more kind of around the intersection of sex especially gay sex and joy um and uh that's I've just kind of been following that passion uh and and so it's shaped my YouTube content but then uh more recently it has 
caused me to launch a website, Himorose TV, um, which is an erotic website for gay and bisexual men uh, and other people, actually. A lot of folks have, have joined. Um, and it's all about increasing pleasure, connection, intimacy. It's getting rid of some of that shame and some of that guilt. And this, you know, we all have it, but especially gay men where we've been told that our sex is like conduit for death, disease, eternal damnation. I want to reconnect people with the the joy of their sexuality. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Word. Your story about the guy masturbating. Turned me on a little bit. Well, no, it <laughs> reminded me. Yes. And it yes. reminded me of when I was little and this is completely not the same thing, but it reminded me of it when I was, I forgot that this happened. I was probably seven or eight. And there was this guy every day that lived on this uh, like on the, in this house in the second story level and he would keep his curtains open and my girlfriend and I, I mean, we're seven or eight years old, would count on every day at like 6 p.m., summertime maybe a little later he would come out naked from the shower and be like just like walking around and we'd see his like penis and we'd and sometimes he would like go in front of the window and we never knew if he knew he would we we, but we could count on it every day and I was like that's what a penis looks like (laughs) oh my god and it was he never masturbated or anything but we saw we see him on the street I saw him at a restaurant once I was like oh my god I know that guy's penis looks like mom uh, I can't tell her. So anyway, it just reminded me of that. And I totally forgot. I never, I didn't have a camera back then, which is probably well, a good thing. I've, I've always thought like, what if I ever saw this guy like out in public? Like it, I owe my entire career to, to this, this guy. Like, oh yeah. Don't, don't ever let anyone tell you nothing good can come from jerking off. Because, <laughs> <Yeah>. You're wrong. <laughs> like, Look at you now. Oh I'm only God. here today because of that. That's amazing. I wonder what that dude in the window is doing now. Hey, dude in the window. That yeah. was me. We're Check, great. Checking We're out your package. Yeah. We're grateful yeah. for you and other dude in the window for masturbating. Thank you for wanking. <laughs> and um, I, so that wasn't my question because there was no question there. <laughs> Davey, Davey. My, my next question is actually about, since obviously you are an amazing uh, filmmaker per, per se and super creative, we've always talked about porn on shameless sex as a wonderful entertainment tool and not so much for education. But my right. question is like, when it comes to mainstream porn, how do you think that it affects modern day sexuality? Yeah. Well, and also like when I say mainstream porn, when I think about mainstream porn, my focus is really on like mainstream gay porn. Um, I know that like straight cisgender porn has all these other layers around misogyny and female pleasure and power dynamics that I, I don't want to speak beyond my experience. Um, but similar to what you're saying, like I was a, a, boy at a Catholic school growing up and my sex ed was don't have it. <laughs> you know, like Sister Mary Francis wasn't going to teach us about rimming or, <laughs> you know, how to suck a cock. And my parents are straight. They weren't going to teach me. My friends were as clueless as I was. And um, so porn kind of did become my sex ed. And uh, I think that's especially true for LGBTQ people. And, and you're, you know, exactly right. Like it's desi- designed to entertain you. It's designed to arouse you, to get you off. It's not designed to teach you about um, all the things that you guys discuss like week after week on your podcast. So um, I feel like a lot of my life, I was just recreating in the bedroom what I was seeing on the screen. And like really, even until a few years ago, I used to think like the harder you fuck someone, like the better it was. Like that was a good fucking because that's, that's what you see in porn. And, and it is fun to be pounded, but like only if that's what you want. It's not fun to, to you know, get pounded if you're craving a slow, sensual experience. Um, but you never see someone in porn say like, hey, like I, I love having you inside me, but uh, it really feels better for me if you just slow down a little bit. <laughs> like you never seen that in porn. <laughs> yeah, you, or any communication or consent or soft dicks or, or, or even pleasure. Um, so porn kind of creates a very certain flavor of sex. And I think the lie that many of us end up believing is that it's really the, the only flavor. Mm. Um, and so we try to do something a little bit different with our content. Mm. I like that. Yeah, I love that. And we, you know, we often speak about uh, one of our taglines here at Shameless Sex is go slower than slow and then slower than that. You know, whatever you thought slow is slow down. And we're not saying do that all the time. And if I speak for my pussy, 
um, you know, it doesn't always want that. There's a time for a hard and fast. There's a time for that fuck me moment. It usually is not within the first two minutes, five (laughs) minutes, often 10 minutes. And, um, and it's when my body tells me like, that's what I want right now. And I can tell by my body, I know my body well, but I I can say when I was 20, I didn't, um, took me a long time to to figure that out. So yeah, I, I think, I'm someone who has been conditioned also by porn and has had to do a lot of personal work, whether it's growth, whether it's education to understand more about how to listen to my body and how to step away from what I was told sex should be and and as opposed to really paying attention to what I really feel. So um, one of my questions for you then, as someone who has now been working in the porn industry, what are some of the positive or helpful things that you've learned about sex from working in the porn industry? Well, uh, you know, I think it's it's only fun for me to create this content because I'm still kind of like learning along the way. Like if, if I had all the answers, I feel like my heart probably just wouldn't be in it in the same way. Um, but the porn, the porn that we create is definitely different than mainstream porn. And when we film, we film with sex coach. Uh, like like we had, um, you guys have had Finn Dearheart on the show, uh, right? Yeah, we love yeah. Finn. yeah. Yeah, so we've, we've worked with Finn quite a bit. Um, and the sex coach helps kind of create the concepts that we film and then works with the models and workshops to help them embody it before filming. And I think the biggest thing that I've learned is uh, we filmed a a video called Voicing Your Desires. And I was just thinking about this when you were talking about your pussy craving like slow sex and being in tune with it and and knowing what your pussy wants. But then it's another step to also communicate that to your partner, Mm -hmm. right? And so this, this video, Voicing Your Desires, is all about doing that. And on that project, the coach we were working with, who specializes in Tantra, um, he was like, you know, trying to explain to us everything that was going on. And I'm like, well, what is Tantra? Like, what is this weird world that we're stepping into? And he said to us, I still remember this. He's like, you know, some people use dance to learn about truth through movement. And some people use meditation to learn about truth through silence. And in Tantra, the opportunity, uh, at least as we understand it, is to to learn about truth through sexual energy. And I just remember thinking like, well, fuck, like I would rather learn about truth from sex than like sitting in silence meditating. So, so I was all in. And in the video, it's kind of the setup of having two models sitting across from each other and you play this tantric game and you take turns for asking for what you want. And then the other person, you know, gets to either do that thing or they'll say, well, you know, that's not really something that I want to give because your, your yes is only as strong as your no. And, uh, and they could like suggest something else. And so you go back and forth. And at first it's like super easy. You're like, oh, I want to be kissed on my neck. Like I want you to massage my chest. But after the first like 10 or 12 rounds, you start to really like really fucking get into it. Like mm-hmm. you start to get vulnerable. Um, the obvious selections have been made. Those are kind of like off the table. And um, like maybe you ask to get your toe sucked or to get pissed on or it kind of just escalates from there. and The tantric coach that we're working with, he said, asking for what you want in sex is a metaphor for asking for what you want in life. Mm. And we don't often do either. So it's really an exercise for better sex, but also for for better life. Mm. Um, So I think that that fundamental idea, like voicing your desires, asking for what you want, listening to what your partner wants, having the courage to explore and try new things, having the courage to say no. Um, I think that's some of the the best stuff that I've learned from the the videos that we've shot. I love that you said your yes is as strong as your mm, no. Yeah, that's it. I I talk about that in business when I when I when I'm trying to close a deal and, and just mm-hmm. I don't have stores. room for maybe's. I was I, and I say <laughs> that and I actually I detest maybe's in life when someone's like, hey, I'm having or if, if I'm like I'm having a party before COVID, I'm having a party like maybe I'll come or maybe I don't know and I'm like, dude definite maybes are not a hard yes or hard no. It's okay. I'd respect you more if you gave me a solid answer. Right. And if it, to me, a maybe is, is a no that's cloaked in positivity. And I'm like, that is bullshit. And it's like, kind of like hope for me. I'm like, hope is for pussies. Just believe. Okay. <laughs> yeah. believe. Yeah. That's my, that's my uh, yeah. co- coach well, critic coming out, but right. Yeah, how could you trust someone to say, like, if you don't trust someone's no, then you're not going to like believe they're yeah, like they're yes. Like you have to really um like I don't want someone to say yes to something if I don't trust that they're empowered to say no. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Totally. Yeah. yeah. I think that that's really important. And with the maybes, it's interesting because you know, with some of the clients that I work with, there's also this part of maybes where um 
people will feel it maybe so they automatically go to no. Um, so say it's, you know, the, the, uh, a partnership where one partner wants more sex than the other one and the other one that doesn't want to sex, they, they want to love sex. They feel a maybe, but they go to a no right away because it's loaded. It, you know, if I say, if I go lean okay. into my maybe, it means just even the lightest touch means you want to fuck me and, and there's not this in between. And, and I'm speaking more to the straight world. Um, and I see it actually more so with uh, the vulva owners, with their penis owners. The vulva owners are the ones, be, they're getting a maybe, but they go to the no because the, they think that if they give the maybe or the yes, it means it's all or nothing. Now we have to mm. fuck. And, the, and so instead, some of the advice I have for maybes is actually there's room for maybes, but also see what you can lean into there as, as well because the maybe itself might be able to be informative, right? If I'm like, okay, I'm getting a maybe, like I'm not getting a full yes to fucking right now or to sex or penetration but i'm getting maybe some sort of intimacy let's explore that so like let's just try you like you know rubbing my shoulders and and then maybe like kissing my neck and see what's available there as opposed like nah i'm tired i have a headache i want to go to sleep even though we haven't had sex in two weeks and i know that this is some a way that i want to connect so i get i agree like a continuation yeah yeah Yeah. like it doesn't have but but it takes all people involved to understand that to have that language that you speak to to be able so i'd like that you're highlighting that that not only there's the what do I know how to feel my body what I want but how do I communicate that and then also if you're in partnerships or loverships you kind of have to be on a similar page to know how to receive that information and share that information so this is important work right. I think for everyone to do involved it's unfortunate yeah. when someone doesn't want to be involved in that work though when you're in the partnership with them keep well and not to generalize but I feel especially my experience with like straight identified men is that they have a hard time talking about these things. Like, especially if it's anything involving their feelings, it just like things just start to shut down. I mean, even gay guys, like, you know, we still have our struggles with that. And, and um, just like men and their feelings, it is not, it is not fun to navigate that. Yeah. I, I, I think that when I also said uh, the hope is for pussies thing, pussies are amazing. So I just want you to know that if you have hope, and you have a pussy, you're awesome. What did Betty White say? Like, why do people say? Yeah, pussies are pussies are weak. Or she's like, so like pussies can t- pussies can take a pounding. Yeah. Like, why do we use that as a weakness? We should talk about balls being yeah. the, weak- <laughs> the balls are the weak ones. So Some balls seriously. can take a Some pounding though. Can. So, uh, so I I just wanted to clarify that, and I think Amy's right. I I and also I think that there is room for maybe specific times for me, unless you're in the bedroom with me. If you're out there and you're in the bedroom with me don't fucking tell me maybe just kidding <laughs> or just say hey i don't have an answer let me take five minutes to feel into it just like oh oh we got or no but let's try this instead yeah. yeah 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 let's try this instead it's all about wording so okay so my next question for you is it's about making porn that is because your mission that we since we've learned about you is uh making porn that's educational affirming and hot also it's it's different from mainstream porn as we've talked about it's also good for you so can you talk more about this and what exactly does this all mean what does this entail yeah it entails a lot of things and it's it's complicated i mean over the summer um we had an anti-racism educator audit our porn And he came back and he said, um, well, you know, there's a lot of representation in your content, but the stories are largely being told through like a a mainly white lens. And and he was right because most of our crew has been white. And, um, you know, if you want models to be authentic and vulnerable, they have to feel safe on set. And this is, you know, an industry, unfortunately, where black and brown bodies are fetishized and reduced to terms like BBC And so, you know, how could a model of color feel safe walking onto a porn set when the crew doesn't, you know, look like him or her? And conversely, like, you know, how much safer would that model feel if the people who are telling his story are the people who are also sharing his experience? Um, I remember a few years ago, we hired a model of color to do a project and he had just filmed another project with like a kind of a mainstream studio. And when he didn't know what the video was going to be titled. And this is with, with another studio. Um, when that studio released the scene, they released it under the name of Black Cox Matter. And he was like totally devastated. You know, he was, and, and there he was like filming with us the next week, telling us how violated he felt um, that he showed like the most intimate aspect of himself on camera and that it was released under a racist title. And I'm like looking around 
and he's, you know, he's telling this to us on set, which is like largely white people. I'm like, well, how could he ever feel safe on, on a porn set again? So I think representation is a part of creating affirming porn. Um, people want to see reflections of themselves in the erotic content. Uh, that also includes people with like visible disabilities, older men, rounder men. We did a survey, I think it was like 68% of our audience wants to see men over the age of 50 mm-hmm. in gay porn. Mm-hmm. Um, m- maybe our audience is like particularly evolved or maybe mainstream porn sites have mistakenly made the assumption that people just want to see like one flavor of bodies on camera, like hard bodies, big dicks, young guys. Uh, and all that's fun, but it's just nice to celebrate other expressions of beauty too. Mm. Um, and I think, you know, like if you just see this, this like hung 25 year olds over and over again, it sends the message that only people who look like that are worthy of touch or pleasure or desire. So, um, yeah, that's, it's, it's just really limiting. Um, and I think one of the other things that we do to kind of create a different flavor of content is we support our, mod- our models through like an aftercare program. Mm. Um, so they get five sessions with a sex counselor to help process some of the things that we explored on camera. God, I love That's that. That's so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it feels a little disingenuous to like, you know, put someone through this like incredible four day experience and then just like throw them back into the world Bye. and say, yeah. have fun integrating that. Okay, time for a quick break. This podcast was made possible by Uberloop. It's a luxurious silicone lubricant that enhances sex and intimacy. We receive emails from listeners who have tried Uberloop, and the feedback is unanimous. We never knew lube could be this good. It's also less likely to throw off the pH than most other lubes, and there are thousands of doctors recommending Uberloop to their patients, whether they want to make their hot sex even hotter or for folks experiencing dryness. Uber Lube is without a doubt my favorite lube. It has no flavor, no scent, and feels absolutely amazing on my body. And it isn't just for sex. I use it to tame my hair frizzies, to prevent chafing, and I even put some in my mouth before an oral sex session. Totally ups my blowjob game. Oh, and the bottle, it's beautiful. It looks like a cosmetic product. So I just leave it out on my nightstand totally shamelessly. To learn why we think it's the best lube on the planet, check out uberlube.com and use code SHAMELESSSEX for 10% off plus free shipping. Again, that's uberlube.com and use code SHAMELESSSEX for 10% off and free shipping. This podcast was also made possible by omgs.com. OMGS is a research-based online program that teaches you all about how to pleasure the pussy. OMGS studied thousands of vulva owners to find out how they orgasm and then made beautiful animated modules and super honest short videos to give you ways to reach even more pleasure. I've been recommending OMGS to my clients for years and it's been changing their lives. We all know pleasure is fluid and ever-changing, so why not add more tools to your pleasure tool belt? OMGS is for everyone, so whether you are a vulva owner or you just love vulvas, OMGS will give you the techniques to get your O face on. There are two seasons to choose from and hundreds of gorgeous videos to explore, so go see what science says about pleasure and visit omgs.com slash shameless. That's O-M-G-S dot com slash shameless to get $5 off your O-M-G-S access. Again, O-M-G-S dot com slash shameless. Go check it out. Now back to the show. Oh my yeah. God. That's incredible. I've never heard of anyone doing it. Well, I, mean, I think of like, you know, with sex, like if, if we if I were to engage in some, any kind of sex, but also like, you know, some, something that was a little more rough sex or kinky sex. And then they were just like, okay, see you later. And there wasn't this aftercare, whatever it is, check in, you know, holding me, petting me softly or whatever it is that, um, that I might need. And I'm saying this cause I'm usually more of the submissive in these roles anyways. Uh, but I, I've never thought about it. People bringing it into the, um, into the kind of more the business side of sex too, mm-hmm. that like how, how big that is to ha- engage in this, like you're saying a four day experience and then later, and there is isn't this this integrative support? Um, I've never heard of any production company director, or anyone doing anything like that. I'm so yeah. so moved by it. Mm-hmm. I think I think porn stars in a lot of ways are asked to carry our like collective shadows mm-hmm. in a lot of ways, um, and um, they don't get a lot of support for that. They don't get uh, you know most studios don't provide them with uh, like any mental health support or connect them with any professionals and. Uh, you see 
you know, unfortunately, especially in, in the gay male world, there's been a lot of high profile incidents where um, porn stars have taken their own lives. Um, and it's like, okay, we got to do a better job of creating a healthy environment um, for, for these folks to, to do the things that they do. I, so one thing that comes to mind as you share that one is that some people listening to this or not listening to this have this idea that anyone that works in sex work is damaged. They have trauma. They're not doing it for the right, I'm doing air quotes, reasons. Um, and so with what you're sharing, I want to invite people to say that, that I'm assuming that's not, you know, not what you're saying. That's not what I'm thinking is like, you know, anyone that does porn, they're traumatized after and that, and that, but it's, but it's just like when you're sharing your body in such a big way, whether it is to make money and on camera or just for you know, me sharing my body with someone else, it, it can be a big deal for a lot of people. And so that doesn't necessarily mean that anyone's traumatized or broken or it's coming from a place that is harmful. I think what I'm, and I'm, and what I'm hearing is that, um, that you're just really taking into account that, that this is a big, a big thing of, of sharing your body in this way. And that no matter what, whether it's for money or not, that it can use the support. And the other thing that came to mind too, and I'm going to ask you a question about um, that kind of the shame piece around porn that a lot of people have. Um, the other thing that came to mind too, is that, um, when you also, we were talking about, um, how a lot of people in people of color are fetishized in porn. Um, I want to also say, I don't want to shame people that if your fetish and the image that you get off to is, you know, a person of color is that you're Googling BBD or whatever that is, which is, you know, big black dick or, or BBP or whatever, um, like there's room for you to have that interest as your fantasy or as what you're interested in. And they're still humans. And I think there's, there's like this balance that I'm hearing you kind of speak to. And so and that's why I want to ask you this question about shame because so many people have it around porn, whether it's the type of porn they watch or, or here's another example. I'm someone who identifies as someone as a feminist. I love watching some porn where some women are getting beat up by their strong, dominant, masculine figure. I don't necessarily want that in my sex all the time. Sometimes I do. It's very consensual. I get a lot of aftercare after. I can say no whenever I want to. Um, but I think some people will even have shame about that. Am I not a feminist if I like watching that? Um, so how, what advice do you have for folks who have shame around watching porn and how can they reclaim it in a positive way? Obviously watching him or is a good way, but what is your advice to those folks? Yeah. You know, I don't know. I, I think part of it is just surrounding yourself with sex positive people. Like I think, I think that's a big piece of it. So like you have this kind of healthy outlet where you can talk about these things, but I mean, a lot of porn isn't created in a particularly like mindful way and um i think if you want to feel good about the porn that you watch then watch porn that is consciously created um i think that makes a big difference like you know as i was saying like we go out of our way to 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 make sure that um, we sometimes joke that our our porn is like grass-fed porn um you know it's like you go out and you buy organic carrots um Porn is also something that you consume. You consume it with your eyes and your brain and your heart. And it's free range cock, <laughs> yeah. but not, yeah, not free range. Also We're grass fed, free, <laughs> grass fed and finished. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, and then it's also just not treating it like a dirty secret. There's a, there's a reason himros.tv has so many like light and bright colors on the site. Porn sites are usually like all like black backgrounds and it makes you feel like you're doing something really secret. Uh, like you're in like the underbelly of the, of the internet. Um, we did a kink shoot two months ago and the coach that we worked with, he was like, Oh, I have all these great dungeons in San Francisco that we can film in. And I'm like, okay, like who, like who, I don't want to watch another kink scene filmed in a dungeon. Like it, that's, it's not, it's not my cup of tea. And as soon as I like see like all the, you know, dark colors and like, I'm kind of like, ah, eh, this isn't, this isn't for me. Um, so instead we took kink like out of the dungeons, out of the shadows. Um, and, and we filmed it. We ended up filming it in the Midwest on, uh, this like big cornfield farm, <laughs> Love that. like in broad daylight. In Wisconsin, it, like where you're from April. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> It was in Missouri, but it was like the most, wow. most like shameless expression of kink, like out in the open for anyone to see, you know, all the light broad daylight. So 
yeah, it was, I think that's part of it. Mm, that's so and, and listening awesome. to sex positive po- podcasts and things like that, like you said, just getting immersed in it, whether it's not your direct community that you're around there, you can listen to things or watch things there that are available. And so it doesn't right. have to be like, you know, you live, you live in Missouri, maybe your community is not the sex positive community. Well, it also takes a little bit more research, right? You, yeah. When you were buying organic foods or if that's what you're into, some people are just like, I want to save money. And I, I get that. And it is important if you are, it, it your money is your power. That's where, it so is. if you want to spend a little bit, a little bit of money on a subscription porn site that you know it's ethical and people are getting aftercare, that's dope, as they say in Santa Cruz. Oh, I and, like I, and I also like the part, like we can get a lot of free porn these days, but just yeah. for folks to know that that doesn't support the performers no. or the directors or the people that are spending their precious time and sharing their bodies in the, these ways. So, I mean, I, I mean, I, I, there may be sometimes... I don't want to shame again, everyone who sometimes accesses free porn and right. just to know like w- what a service this is that people are offering and creating. Um, so by subscribing to a site or paying to watch these things, like, wh- I mean, why should you not, ha- why should this just be a free thing? You know, podcasts are free. This is great. We can do free things. We right. have advertisers to support this so we can do this free for you. Mm-hmm. But, you know, what, but how, how would that apply to porn? Why wouldn't you pay for that? Our most successful marketing campaign that we did in the last year was a, it was like answering the question, like, why should you pay for your porn? And, you know, like in the last year alone, we've hired more than a hundred queer filmmakers and models and artists, you know, like this puts money in people's pockets and allows them, you, do you like a world where there's queer art? Okay, great. Like then you need to support queer artists. Mm -hmm. Um, And that was our our most effective campaign that we, uh, that we did. But. That's I, I I agree. I completely agree. I love I'd love Davy Wavy and all of your mm-hmm. amazing creations that you're doing. And I, you said something, and we had talked about it before we started recording. But it was about what queer folks can teach non LGBT right. folks about sexuality. Will you talk a little bit more about this? This is so amazing. Uh, just like this statement in general, and I believe so as well. So I'd love to hear more. Yeah, I think LGBTQ people. Um, are really are really good teachers for for non queer folks. I, sometimes I feel like I'm a little bit of like a gay supremacist, <laughs> but, but like okay, so gay men, for example, like in this current moment, right, we're navigating COVID nineteen and navigating sexual health in the midst of a global pandemic is it's kind of like in our DNA. We did it for fucking two decades around HIV and AIDS. Mm -hmm. So I think we're like, especially well positioned to help people connect with pleasure at a time when maybe a lot of people are putting it on our, our, on a back burner. Um, And I also think that gay men, and this isn't true of all of us, but in general, we embody a more sustainable version of manhood, like compared to straight cisgender men, we move through masculine and feminine energies, I think with a little bit more ease. We're not so like rigidly attached to that, like hyper uh, masculine, like really toxic version of manhood that says like, you can't show emotions. You can't talk about feelings. You can't be vulnerable. Um, And we all have masculine and feminine energies, but we live in a world where at least in my opinion, it feels sorely out of balance. Like, you know, especially when it comes to world leaders or, you know, it's just like toxic masculinity has been a big part of our politics, of our culture, and look where it has gotten us, right? Mm-hmm. Like not in a particularly great place. And I think that's why a lot of people say the future is female. Um, if, and if we're going to have a future, it's got to be. So I think I think gay guys model a more sustainable version of what it means to be a man. How about the future is equal, though? That, that would be even better. Or the future is yeah. like balance equal. or everyone. Yeah, balance. Yeah, balance. And, uh, because yeah. I just, yeah. So I didn't mean to interrupt you either, Davey, but I just was thinking that because the future might be feminine or in this female range, but it also just needs balance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're so like out of sync. Yeah. Yeah, we keep going back and forth to the ex- these extremes, or well, yeah, but it's and sometimes I'm like, okay, maybe we need to go to these extremes to get back into balance. But like, when are we going to get fucking in balance? You know, I when, don't know. If we've when's ever, the last time we were? I don't think humanity don't know. ever really has been in balance. I think that we're more conscious because we're more aware because we have more information streams. So we have this ability to raise like consciousness amongst humans that care. But within pleasure, I think pleasure is really part of that foundation of uh living your best self and your pleasure is and and 
could be one of the most important pieces of redefining yourself, whether you're queer or whether you're straight or whatever you identify with. It's like mm-hmm. your pleasure is it's this really important piece of, of yourself. At least for me, I will speak for, for myself. I know that when I've finally been able to open up and dive into the pleasure seeker that I really am and, and able to identify that I've, I've actually felt closer to myself. And like, I know myself better and you, it's only shame and, and put ourselves in the little boxes that it starts to get weird. Yeah. Your sexual energy is the most powerful energy that you have. I mean, it's literally fucking like life giving, right? Like it creates life. And one of the tantric instructors we worked with, not that I'm a conspiracy theorist, I'm not, but he was like, look, he's like, of course, churches like teach us that we need to go to like the priest to get our, like they teach us that masturbation is wrong, that anything that is going to connect us with that pleasure and that power is wrong because they want you to go to the priest or to the church to get that power and not realize that you have it all inside yourself already and that your sexuality is the easiest and most effective way to access that power. Mm. It's also often the first thing that's targeted in communities too, when you want to really harm a community or a culture, and this has been going on for uh, centuries upon centuries, right, is sexuality, whether that's, you know, from from rape or, you know, the witch hunts or whatever that is, is, it's sexuality is a really easy thing to target as well. And and on the the plus side, it's a really, really wonderful thing to tap into and to celebrate and experience the most aliveness or deep connection or something. So it's like this blessing and this, this curse at the same time. And I mean, Hence why I got into it. I was like, I don't understand this thing. I know it's mm-hmm. fucking powerful. Yeah, right. I took a career out of it. So, um, okay. So some questions that I have for you too about, about your work. So we get this question a lot from, from people, one about how to find ethical porn or, and I think it's, it's different strokes for different folks. You know, as someone who identifies more as a straight person, I love watching gay porn. I love cocks. <laughs> so there's that. Um, and <laughs> lots so, of cocks and gay lots, porn. I love lots of cock. Yeah. More cock. Bring on the cock. Um, <laughs> but for some folks that are listening and we're, we'll talk more about Himmeros and your podcast and also the Himmeros TV where they can actually watch your offerings there too. If some folks are listening and they're like, okay, well, I like cock, but I also don't necessarily. And maybe you can also share, does Himmeros have um, non-cock uh, sex in there too. Um, but some references that I have for other folks, I think um, Erica Lust does some more ethical porn that could speak more to uh, folks who might identify more in the, in the straight world, but also it's, it's uh, I think there's some diverse offerings. So go, you can look up Erica Lust. There's also, I believe, Crash Pad series um, by Pink and White Productions, I think. They do more yeah. um, like ethical queer porn. And then Brie, we had... Oh, Brie Mills. Brie Mills, we had her on our show yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. So here's just some references, but let's talk about Himeros. So if people want to listen to your podcast, they want to go watch Himeros, tell them more about that. How can they find you? And then what are your offerings? Like how do you work personally with people? Is there other things that they can do with you? Yeah. So the easiest way um, for people to connect with their work is at Himeros.tv. You can actually do Himeros.tv forward slash pod. So it's H-I-M-E-R-O-S.tv. Um, and if you go to Himeros.tv forward slash pod, you can save 20% off uh, your membership. And you'll see links there to our podcast and to all the different um, work that we do. If you want to see me personally, you can go to official Davey Wavy on Instagram uh, and follow me there. I don't work with people individually one-on-one. Like I am not at all an expert. I'm kind of on this journey, just enjoying it and producing Mm -hmm. the fuck out of the content that I'm passionate about. Mm -hmm. Um, But we do work with a lot of great coaches and instructors like um, Finn Deerhart or Jason Tantra. Uh, Brad Amberhart, different coaches. Some of them uh, tend to work more with queer people and then some work with all sorts of expressions of relationships and individuals. So um, if you're on that journey, then, you know, we can definitely connect you with the, with the right folks. Mm. What is humorous? What, um, I keep thinking humorous, like you're, uh, you're like part of your, uh, what is it, elbow? Right, a humorous? bone. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. That wasn't what we were going for. It's, uh. <laughs> it's the Greek god of desire. Oh. Um, and it's also the word him and eros combined. Oh. So it seemed kind of like a, seems like a good little, plus all the good ones are taken, you know? No, yeah. that's a good one. That is, but I kept thinking humorous. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I really just want to thank you. Uh, you're incredible. You're an incredible guest. I love your energy. Mm-hmm. And I think our listeners will value this no matter what you're into out there. If you listen to Shameless Sex, you know that we bring you amazing guests and I'm going to check out Himeros. And uh, this podcast was, was great. And 
it brought back some memories for me about that guy with the pain in the window too, <laughs> which is really nice. <laughs> hey guy, thank what you, you doing hey now? Yeah. <laughs> Lizzie, what are you doing? So thank you, Davey Wavy, yeah, for your you. amazing awesome. creations yeah. and your offerings to the world. And uh, I hope to continue to support your work. And if you're out there in listener land, hopefully sipping a glass of Pinot Noir or perhaps Ooh, the San, Giovese. San Giovese from Margins Wine. We are sipping the San Giovese right now. Our fave. If you would like to try that too, go to marginswine.com and taste our beautiful, beautifully grown Santa Cruz and area grown grapes. Did I say grown twice? Woman owned and operated. Yeah. yeah. She's mm-hmm. amazing. Megan Bell has been with us as a partner for a while. We drank her wine all the time and it does a great job. See, so it makes this great podcast. It's a great yeah. podcast. So <laughs> go to him or us, check out the uh, offerings from Davey Wavy and all of his production and, and beautiful films and sip some margins wine. And, and we have discount code. If you go to our show notes for margins wine, you get yes. a discount on three or more bottles, three or more bottles. And it's the holidays. So it's time to probably tie one on. I know I ho 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 and mazel tov. Ho 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 mazel and tov other things. and all the things. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you Davy Wavy so very much and thank you to all of our shameless sex listeners. If you have a free moment in your holiday jumbles of life, go ahead. Go to itunes.com. Give us five stars. We read every single review because we love you and we hope you love us too. But tell us. We want to hear you. All right. We'll see you next Tuesday y'all. Ciao for now. Want to learn more? Go to shamelesssex.com. And for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use code shamelesssex at purepleasureshop.com.